A short summary. After fifty odd years of believing Bell's theorem, that all modern physicists have been brought up with, it is a bit difficult to convince them that quantum mechanics is not the most complete description of the microscopic. However, there is an abundance of evidence in support of this. First and foremost, the consequences from quantum mechanics in determinism and on locality are driving forces because quantum weirdness makes no physical sense. The repudiation of Bell's theorem is a result of three independent studies. First, Han Gerdes has shown from a fundamental mathematical approach that quantum correlations do not exist. Bell's inequalities can be violated using classical probabilities. Second, Joy Christian has demonstrated that Bell missed a lot of elements of physical reality, of spin. Bell made a fundamental error. Including these elements led to the correct form of Bell's inequalities for spin, using no quantum mechanics. These theories also show that a local hidden variable theory must exist to complete quantum mechanics. My two-dimensional spin discussed in this blog provides that subquantum theory that completes quantum mechanics in the sense that EPR envisioned in 1935. So in this last part of blog 009, I will show how my local hidden variable theory is consistent with Gerd's and Christian, and that spin is, at the most fundamental level, an anion. To see the connection to my local hidden variable theory, let us start with the two-sphere, as Christian did. We see the equatorial planes, which are one-spheres, S1. Now, the unit trivectors of Christian define the two spin values as we have seen, but this can point in any direction on that sphere. Here is another orientation and another equatorial plane. And note that x, y, z are different, so they have primes on them. And another. There are an infinite number of planes, and if you have read my blog 6, 7, and 8, then each change of coordinate corresponds to a different spin orientation and a different spin microframe, x, y, z. Topologically, the two-sphere, S2, is made up of an infinite number of equatorial planes, which are one-spheres, S1. So let us look at one plane of the infinite number possible. Whereas Christian uses the trivector in S2 to orient a spin, the two-dimensional subquantum spin I have talked about uses a bivector in S1, like this. So now we see the two-dimensional spin oriented in its microframe. I have used a right-hand rule here, so we see that this system has handedness, as well as magnitude, the plane Zx, and orientation by the bivector, I sigma y. These are exactly my two-dimensional spins. In that 2D plane, and when no interactions are present, the two components of angular momentum are indistinguishable, and this produces the new state of matter, the exchange spin of root 2. This relates my subquantum local hidden variable theory to Christians and is consistent with Gert's conclusion that classical probabilities work. Let's just rotate them again. I was talking about this with one of my colleagues in physics at McGill, Kosev Dasgupta, and in our discussions he said these look a lot like anions. Now anions exist in a plane. My spin is two-dimensional in a plane. Show fractional or irrational quantum numbers, minus square root of two, and display a phase. One spin can be rotated to the other, and their orientations differ by a phase so that when two anions are interchanged, the phase is neither plus one for bosons nor minus ones for fermions, but any phase. So they are called anions. A lot is already known about them, but I will defer that to my next entry. Let me summarize the difference between quantum mechanics and the subquantum local hidden variables of anion spins. The quantum view of a spin is a point particle described by the three components of a spin vector that exists both in the presence and the absence of a probe. Subquantum mechanics replaces this with an anion spin, with a two-dimensional structure that has area, magnitude, and handedness. Rather than the components i, sigma x, sigma y, and sigma z, 
for the usual spin one half, the anions are described by sigma x, sigma z, and i sigma y. Well, bye bye Bell, it's the end of an era, and hello anions, the beginning of a new era. So okay, all this is a bit of a disaster for Bell, but it's good news for Einstein. He deserves to look smug. He told us all this must be true in 1935, and finally he has been shown to be correct. Bell's error has nonetheless helped us to focus our understanding, but don't feel bad for him. We all make errors. I make a lot, and we should learn from them. Bell found an error in the work of the famous brilliant mathematician John von Neumann, who is also called the father of the modern computer and made enormous contributions to our understanding of quantum mechanics. But von Neumann did make a big error in his assumptions in an important paper of 1936, which basically incorrectly concluded that no hidden variables of any kind can complete quantum mechanics. This dashed EPR's conclusions the year after EPR was published in 1935 and swayed many into believing that quantum mechanics is complete. Bell found this error in 1966, so there was 30 years of confusion. But let's all be reminded of what Bell said about von Neumann's error. The von Neumann proof, if you actually come to grips with it, falls apart in your hands. There is nothing to it. It is not just flawed, it is silly. When you translate his assumptions in terms of physical disposition, they're nonsense. So you may quote me on that. The proof of von Neumann is not merely false, but it is foolish. Von Neumann was no fool, and neither was Bell. Welcome to Flatland.